Tumor treating fields are a novel modality used for the treatment of gliomas. It uses arrays that are placed on a shaved head. Patients must use TT fields for 75% of the time. That usually means that they either use it for several days in a row and then take a day off, or they may use it for a certain number of days daily. Often you do have to change the arrays out as the hair grows out, and so in practice, patients will use it in different formats. It has already been approved in recurrent glioblastoma since 2010. At that time, it hadn't really shown much of overall survival benefit, but it had been shown to be equivalent to salvage chemotherapy in that setting. And it was far better tolerated in terms of systemic side effects. However, the landmark study was actually published in 2016, where the device was compared to patients who had just received the standard radiation and temozolomide for newly diagnosed glioblastoma. Patients who use TT fields in the adjuvant setting with concurrent temozolomide for newly diagnosed glioblastoma had increases in overall survival, had tumor control for longer, had higher rates of response, and that these benefits extended at the two-year and the five-year marks, such that concurrent with radiation and temozolomide, tumor-treating fields averaged around 43% overall survival rates at two years much higher than temozolomide alone, which was around 29%, and much higher than radiation alone, that was in the single digits to 12%, even in the best categories. So based on the 2016 trial results, the standard of care became tumor treating fields in the adjuvant setting with temozolomide preceded by radiation with temozolomide. There has been some limited adoption from patients due to the ease or lack of ease of use. However, given the clear benefit of overall survival, of progression-free survival, it should at least be offered to every newly diagnosed glioblastoma patient. In the recurrent setting, it is actively being studied in other glioma subtypes, such as high-risk IDH wild-type astrocytomas, uh, among other disease categories. Tumor treating fields, in my opinion, and based on the current data, should be offered to all newly diagnosed glioblastoma patients. It should be discussed at recurrence in patients who have not received it in the upfront setting. And it should be considered even in patients who have limited functional status. For example, there are plenty of patients who may not tolerate an extensive surgery, who may not tolerate a full course of radiation. However, tumor treating fields, aside from the cosmetic burden, are actually well tolerated, have minimal toxicity, aside from the skin toxicity. This is a case example of a 64-year-old who presented with facial droop and expressive aphasia and was found to have an unresectable glioblastoma. This patient initially underwent biopsy alone for diagnosis. This patient actually experienced rapid progression of their disease within weeks of the biopsy and before they had even started IMRT photon radiation. After the course of chemotherapy and radiation, this patient experienced a mixed response to treatment, also known as pseudoprogression, where they developed a new satellite nodule that was within the radiation field, but outside the area that was previously assessed as his tumor volume. The patient then was started on chemotherapy, but had severe pancytopenia with the temozolomide, and then was started on bevacizumab. Unfortunately, this patient had progressive hemiparesis, and he developed a DVT and PE, which would mean that the patient can no longer receive bevacizumab therapy. This slide now depicts the treatment response for this patient after they had received bevacizumab, and they were then treated with tumor treating fields, or TT fields. As you can see here on these corresponding axial MRIs, the patient had a significant response to this therapy. I have a 72-year-old elderly and frail man who was initially diagnosed and in better functional status in 2010 with a right frontal glioblastoma. At that time, he underwent a maximal safe resection, followed by radiation and concurrent and adjuvant temozolomide. However, he progressed rapidly through standard treatment. He was placed on salvage bevacizumab. And once progression was again noted, 
he was treated with repeat radiation using gamma knife stereotactic radio surgery. Subsequent to that, he was placed on maintenance tumor treating fields. He remains on tumor treating fields since 2013 with no evidence of tumor recurrence, in similar if not slightly improved functional status, and with no major side effects except from skin irritation. Tumor treating fields, or TT fields, have made a significant advancement for patients with newly diagnosed glioblastoma. These fields basically deliver alternating electrical energy with low intensity to even intermediate frequency to the brain tissue. Now these tumor treating fields basically act as antimictotic activity. And they've actually shown a potential in glioblastoma patients that improves the disease-free survival as well as the overall survival for these patients. Patients in general wear a device that generates these fields and they're externally placed electrodes. Now the incorporation of this electrical field therapy into the GBM treatment paradigm has been somewhat slow, mostly because of the practicality of its usage and the hesitation of the medical community to really adopt this. However, the clinical trials that have been performed are of the highest level of evidence and show a significant improvement in overall survival with this therapy. So this is something we definitely offer to every patient. One major advance in radiation oncology for the management of brain tumors is the advent of proton therapy. Uh, proton therapy is an elegant way of treating brain tumors with radiation, primarily because we eliminate the exit dose of radiation into normal brain tissue. This has multiple advantages. For tumors that require very high doses of radiation, but the tumors are located proximate to critical organs, it is almost impossible to get to these high doses because of the proximity of critical organs. Proton therapy overcomes this limitation. The prototypical example for this is a tumor known as chordoma, and there the outcomes of patients treated with proton therapy are substantially superior to those treated with photon therapy. But there are other reasons to consider proton therapy in patients with brain tumors. In lower grade glioma patients, we have dramatically shifted the survival schedule and calendar for our patients. For the favorable category of lower grade glioma patients, median survivals in excess of 10, 12, 14 years are now routinely described in a number of trials. For these patients, diminishing the adverse consequences of therapeutic effect are critical. Conventional radiation delivers a high dose to normal tissues, such as, for example, the temporal lobes or the hippocampi and other structures, which have detrimental visual, endocrine, cognitive and intellectual dysfunctional uh, issues that patients suffer. Proton therapy has the opportunity to lower these dramatically. It's also important to remember that many of these patients become substantial long-term survivors, and these patients are at risk of developing second malignancies from exposure of normal tissue to prior radiation. And again, proton therapy has the ability to lower that risk. So there are multiple potential advantages of technologies such as proton therapy. And what's really intriguing is the recent publication of a randomized trial wherein patients were treated with conventional radiation versus modern sophisticated radiation techniques that lower the radiation dose to normal tissues. And those patients with the modern techniques had substantially superior outcomes in multiple domains. This is an exciting time to be in the field of neuro-oncology. For the first time, we are beginning to test a variety of novel therapeutic strategies and novel agents that are actually throwing up positive signals. It's not as if we were not testing novel agents a few years back, but successively we were seeing wave after wave of negative results and negative trials. We have become a little bit smarter. We have recognized that a number of tumors carry actionable mutations. And when these actionable mutations are present, subsets of these tumors do respond to targeted therapies. Combining these targeted therapies with existing therapies, such as existing chemotherapy or radiation, is one of the challenges of the day. <laughs>